In this exercise, we will cover building paths and JavaScript path drawing methods on the Canvas element. We're going to start with the begin path method. So we'll type in ctx.beginpath, open close parenthesis, semicolon. And you can put a little note to yourself on that line that says it resets the current default path. Now the next method that we'll put into play is the ctx.move to. And that takes x and y coordinates. So let's say I start plotting this path at 50x and 50y. And on this one, you can give yourself a comment that says create a new subpath with the given point. Then we're going to use the ctx.line2 method with x and y coordinates as well. So if we make that go to an x position 250 and a y position of 50, we should get a straight line. Now to see the effects of that, we're going to use the stroke method. And this method strokes the current default path. And the line2 method creates a new line along the current path, or subpath. Now if we look at this in our favorite browser, we see a straight line. Now we can just keep adding line2 methods before the stroke method. So let's go from 250x down to 150y. Let's take a look at that. And we have another edge to our path. Now let's make another line that takes it back to the x position 50 and the y position of 150. That'll give us another edge. Now at this point, you could use the close path method. CTX dot close path. So this closes the current path. If you look at that, you'll see you don't have to draw the last line. And you can also add a fill CTX dot fill method and that will give you a filled shape that also has a stroke and if you want to remove the stroke you just put fill and then close path so no matter what shape custom polygons or circles or ovals whatever you're making you can use ctx.fill and close path as well and begin path also applies for all of those so I'll just leave my stroke in place now the next thing we're going to look at is a method that determines to see if a point, if a pixel location on the canvas is within the current path, ctx dot is point in path, and that returns true or false, whether or not the point specified is within the path. So you can see our path, if we specify a point, here, let me go ahead and comment this out. And let's look at our canvas. If we specify a point that's maybe, it just has to be greater than 50, x and y and it will be within this area as long as we don't make it too much greater so if I make it 75 by 75 or 75 x 75 y that would be around somewhere like right here and that would be a point in the path so what I'm gonna do is just alert myself just for testing purposes to see what this renders if I put 75 here and 75 here for the x position we'll see if that point 75x and 75y is a point within that path. Now this alert should say true. So I have an alert of true. Okay. So let's change those numbers to 2525 to make the point that we're trying to determine somewhere up here in the canvas. So just change that to 2525 25, and you'll see that now you get false because the point is not in the path will make a comment that says determines if a specified point is in a path now we're going to take a look at the rect method so let's get rid of all of this code that we put in and get back just to our ctx object so we'll put in ctx dot rect open close parentheses and we're going to put four parameters the x position we want the rectangle to start at the y position we want it to start at its width and its height so I'll make its width and height 100 pixels so it'll be a little box a little square and let's just put it at an x position of 50 and y position of 50 now we shouldn't see anything until we put a stroke on it or a fill so we can either stroke it or fill it so let's put ctx dot stroke take a look and there's a little rectangle any position any size so if we wanted another one sitting right next to that one we could put it in x position of 150 and if we take a look at that they should be side by side we want to move it over a little bit 160 now it has 10 pixels in between them. Now I wanted to put two rectangles there so I can show you guys how the clip method works. So we'll have 
a rectangle position of 0 x and 0 y for the first rectangle. Actually, let's leave the first one where it was and let's put the second one at 0 0 and see what that looks like. All right, so what we're going to do now is clip this second by using the first one as a clipping region. So all we have to do is go in between those two and type in ctx.clip and it makes a clipping region out of this rectangle and every, anything that's within this rectangle will be clipped within it. So this rectangle happens, a portion of it happens to be within the first rectangle. So the second rectangle should be clipped within the first. So you see what happened? You can't see the rest of this rectangle. All you can see is what's clipped inside of the first rectangle. So that's how clip works and you can use that on any kind of shapes and paths that you're using. The next path drawing method we're going to take a look at is the ctx.arc method. Now this one gets one, two, three, four, five, six parameters and they start with plotting out your x and y coordinates. So let's say 150x and a 150y position. Let's give it a radius of 100 pixels. That way its full diameter will be 200. The starting angle I'm going to leave at 0 and the ending angle I'm going to put at 6.28 that is pi times 2 and then the anti-clockwise parameter either gets true or false so if you want it to be counterclockwise you put true if you want it to be clockwise you put false and false is the default so now let's go ahead and stroke that arc ctx.stroke see what we get so we have a circle a perfect circle that has a 100 radius giving us a 200 pixel diameter okay so in JavaScript you can use the math dot pi times 2 to also get 6.28 more programmatically within the JavaScript language but you could just put the number 6.28 if you want perfect circles there if you use math dot pi which is 3.14 you'll get a semicircle you see so we refresh the page and we got a semicircle. Now what if we change the clockwise to counterclockwise by putting true for the anti-clockwise parameter? It goes up the other way. So you get a semicircle going the other way. And you can really just put any numbers that you want in there. Now if, what if I make that 6.27? You see a little sliver went away. Let's make that 6.1. You see a little more of it went away or it doesn't it makes an incomplete circle So if I put that on five I should get a lot less of a full circle one so you see how that works so I'll just leave that as math dot pi times two and that gives you a perfect circle now let's take a look at the arc two method for that we're going to need some lines or at least the start of a line the start of a path so I'm gonna use the move to method and the line to method and the stroke just to put a line that's going across the screen. So here I have my line going across the screen, move to, plotted it here to begin with, and then line to, drew the line across the screen to 300x. Now right after the line to, right before the stroke, I'm going to put ctx.arc2 method. And this takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parameters. x1 and y1 is where it begins, x2 and y2 is where it ends, and then you just put the radius. I'll make mine radius of 50 so it has a full diameter of 100. And since my line's stopping at 300, I'm going to put an x1 of 350, and then a y1 of 50, an x2 of 350, and a y2 of 100. That way it goes down a little bit and arcs. So if I refresh the page, you'll see I get a nice arc connecting that line to the next line that I'm going to draw. So let's just l use the line 2 method again under the arc 2 to draw a new line, 350x, 200y. So it goes and continues that path. Now what if you wanted to have a larger radius, like 100? You'll see that when you refresh, it kind of messes your stuff up a little bit. So if I put this on something like 380 on the 350s, you see what I get? Now if I put that on... I don't know, maybe 390 would be better. Refresh. And then I just have to fix the last, put that on 390 here. Refresh. You see? 
So it could be any diameter that you need it to be, and you can connect it up to other lines within your path pretty easily. I'm going to replace this arc2 method with the quadratic curve2 method. That way you can have a look at that one. And that one gets four parameters, control point x, control point y, and then the x and y coordinates. So I'll give that the following values. Now 390 and 100 is my subpath coordinates for its x and y position. These are control points. So if I refresh that, now what if I move that 390 to 350? This point will move in this way. You see? Or if I make it greater, like 420, it'll move the other way. So you can see that that is our X position, because it's moving that point along the horizontal plane. Go back to 390. And if I move this to 200, or 150, you can see that that's the Y position, because it's moving it in the vertical plane. Put that back on 100. Now, let me move the control points around, and you'll see how that works. Now, if I change this to 10, for the Y position for the control point for the quadratic curve, you'll see that the curve goes up. And now if I decrease this to 200, the curve will not only go up, but it will go in this way. See? If I make it 400, it'll go out that way. So that's how the quadratic curve 2 works. This is your control point X, your control point Y, and this is your regular subpath X and Y positions just like the line 2 method works. Okay, now stemming off of that, we're going to take a look at the Bezier Curve 2 method. Now what that does, it gives you two more control points, so you can get more of a wavy line or different kind of curves. So you have control point 1x, control point 1y, control point 2x, control point 2y, and then your x and y coordinates for the subpath. So just like the other one, I'm going to make my x and y, the y was 100 and the x was 390. Now I'm just going to set some control point values and then refresh the page. Now let's make control point 1x 280. Refresh. You see what that does? You can't get that with the other kind of curves. This gives you more of like a pen tool effect. If you're used to working in graphics editing software, you're used to using the pen tool, you can get pen tool type lines. More of a curved squiggly line. So if we move the other control point X to something similar like 250 and refresh, if we put this on 300, it starts to tighten up more. What if we change the Y value for the first control point? Change the Y value for the second control point, make it 10. And remember, these were the X and Y coordinates. So if I put this on 400, you'll see that this point here simply moves over 10 pixels this way. Let's put that back 390. And that's how the Bezier Curve 2 method works. Control point 1, X. Control point 1, Y. Control point 2, X. Control point 2, Y. And then your regular coordinates for the subpath. Okay, that completes the building and drawing paths and all the JavaScript methods that control path building and drawing on the canvas element.